my top 10 realistic boxing combinations designed for knockouts. During this video, as we go through the 10 combinations, we're gonna break them down on the mitts, but you'll also see clips on some of them where they've played out in fight scenarios that have led to knockouts as well. So hopefully this gives you a little bit of fuel to go and work on these in the gym. If you're new to the channel, thanks for watching. Reminder to subscribe, like the video, share the video, leave your comments, leave your knockout your favorite knockout combinations in the comments as well, and we can get those on the channel too. Um, with that out of the way, let's get to it. Combination number one, the cross hook cross. So you see on the video clip right there, Cole Frotch finished Jermaine Taylor off with this, just laying those cross hook crosses in nonstop to finish the fight in one of my favorite fights. So simple, for an orthodox boxer, right hand straight through the target, coming back with the left hook, and then coming right back through with the right hand again. Now the key to getting the power in this is to fully extend the cross, go right through the target, shift the weight to the front side, rotate the core, come back with the hook, when we come back with the hook, we're shifting the weight back to the power side, elbow up nice and high, fist right in front of the face, core tight, and then coming right back through again, and it's that weight shift in the legs that gets the power. So cross, hook, cross. Now one thing I like to do with this to build a little bit of endurance, if you're working on finishing it off in, in a fight scenario, we can build it up with odd numbers. So three to start, to work on the technique, a bit of endurance, we can go five, then we can go seven, we can go up to nine and ladder it up and then we can come back down and so on. Just a little bit of an endurance drill with that knockout combination, the cross hook cross. All right, so there's number one in the bag. Number two, we're gonna work on a little bit of footwork here. So you see Tyson Fury finished Deontay Wilder off in their second fight with this. Great combination, classic amateur boxing style, getting up on the toes and getting that bounce, right? So just step back a little bit to give yourself the range. So starting out of range with the jab. So he comes into range with the jab and then he gets out of range of the counter by hopping back onto the back foot and then really using the power off the back foot to spring into the knockout combo, the one-two. All right, so we're going jab, spring out with the feet, spring back in immediately with the one-two. Good, again. Good, and you can give that little jab and or some kind of punch coming back to get the, the uh, boxer to understand the range they're getting out of with the feet. Jab, out, in with the one-two. Nice and simple, amateur boxing 101. Touch, get, avoid the counter, come back in with the knockout one-two. All right, number two's in the books. Number three, we're gonna jab to set things up again. The jab is always there to set things up. So we start off with the jab. Now with this, we're actually gonna feint the cross, right? So we're gonna simulate the exact same movement pattern that we would. He's gonna rotate his body and really dip that right shoulder to make me think, oh, the right hand's coming, which gets me to kind of slip away or cover. And then from there, the right hand doesn't actually come. It's just a feint, perfectly set up for that lead hook to the body right there. Boom, okay, right under the elbow. Let's um, show them from this side on this one. So we've started with the jab. I'm throwing that, uh, I'm holding that target for him to kind of feint the cross and then I'm just whipping the mitts in position for that lead hook to the body. So jab, feint the cross, lead hook to the body. <coughs> nice, good, and a little movement of that glove as he, as he drops that uh, right shoulder in, really sell me on that cross. <coughs> good, and then really whip that body shot in. <coughs> good, now the beauty of that feint, not only is it getting your opponent to react and, and kind of get out of the way of that cross that isn't coming, but it also perfectly puts the body in position for the body shot. Um, because as he's fainted, he can really be exaggerated with that shoulder and really dip down and get into that front leg. Now he's perfectly loaded up for a really powerful lead hook to the body. So you have it, number three, jab, faint the cross, come with the lead hook to the body. Great knockout combination right there. All right, so number four, we're gonna start with some defense. So slipping the lead cross, right? So we're starting with some defense and similar to combination number one, three punches, we're going hook, cross, hook this time. Hook, cross, hook, right? Same concepts apply as what we worked on in number one with the cross, hook, cross. Shifting that weight in the legs, elbow up on the hook, nice and long with the cross. The weight transfer, the core rotation is what's gonna get the power. So we're starting off with defense, reactions, you're gonna slip, boom, boom, boom. Now when you're catching this on the pads, throw that right hand nice and straight right down the middle for them to slip, but make sure they've got the target for the hook so they can actually, you're training them to see the target for the counters. Notice as well, after I've thrown that right hand, I come straight back in position to catch the cross, okay? So number four, slip, hook, cross, hook. Okay, there you have number four. All right, we're almost halfway there. All right, number five. So now we're working on inside combinations. So we're gonna be a little closer for this one. We're gonna set up the body shot again, but this time with a rear uppercut. So similar to what we worked on with the feint in combination number three, we're actually throwing an uppercut this time, but using that uppercut to kind of get in position to whip that lead hook to the body, right? So um, when, when you throw the uppercut, 
Just make sure your head's behind your knee right there. Yep, so just back a little bit and then whip, whip that in. Boom, okay. So you see on the clip right here, Triple G ended Matthew Macklin with this uh, brutal body shot that just completely crippled him. And he set it up with that lead uppercut and that's designed to just get you in position for that lead, lead hook to the body. Now the rear uppercut also uh, from, a, from the opponent's standpoint, as he throws that rear uppercut, it's getting me to get my gloves or my um, gloves up and my elbows away from the body. It's really difficult to defend that uppercut, right? and not let the elbows kind of come away. It's just a kind of natural instinct to control that punch by getting the gloves involved and the forearms involved and that leads the body to be exposed because the elbows are coming away from the body. So number one, it's getting the body in position to land the, the, up, the, the hook to the body, but it's also creating that opening right there for the body shot, as you see in the clip there. All right, so there you have it. There's number five, rear uppercut, lead hook to the body. Great combination right there for knockouts. All right guys, we're halfway through, five more to come. Just a quick reminder, subscribe to the channel, that way you're gonna get notified of the videos coming out each week. Like this video, share it, leave your comments below, helps the channel keep going. I'd love your feedback on these combos as well. If I've missed any out, leave them in the comments below. All right, moving on to number six. We're gonna start with the jab to the head again. So a jab up top, we're gonna to drop the right hand to the body. And then from there, similar concept again, it's getting me to move my gloves, drop them down. Now from there, we're just coming back up, we're loaded in the legs, hook cross up top, okay? So he's getting me to defend the jab, right? Then he's getting me to drop my gloves and defend that body shot, which again pulls the hands away from the head, which creates the opening for the hook cross up top. So a jab to the head, two to the body, hook two, okay? Now when I'm catching this, that two to the body, I'm just holding it nice and flat to the stomach. As soon as I felt it land, I've got the hook in place, and then I just bring that up straight away so it's in place so the whole combination can flow. All right, so I always talk about this quite a lot in my videos when you're catching these on the mitts if you're coaching. Um, just make sure you're a step ahead of your boxer and you're flowing it and, and putting those mitts in accurate positions, right? We don't want to be kept playing catch up and doing too much work. So a jab to the jab to the head, two to the body, hook cross up top. There's number six. All right, so for number seven, this time we're going to start with a jab to the body, right? Again, distracting me with the body shot, getting me to drop the gloves and the arms down away from the head and then we're coming up, driving through the legs and coming back up, back up to head height with the power in the legs, a really powerful right hand over the top. So just jab to the body, and then straight in. Just a one-two basically, but the jab's gonna be to the body. Boom, boom. Good, nice and quick. Good, immediately going into that cross off the jab to the body because it, we've created the opening, and we're coming in nice and fast and driving through the legs. And for the, for the target right here, we want it pretty, pretty accurate. Hold it on the area that you would expect that jab to be, and then head height with the, with the cross. Go. Good, nice. So jab to the body, cross. There's number seven. All right, number eight, we're gonna start off with a feint of the jab now just to draw the reaction of the opponent and we're stepping in with two power punches, the lead hook and the cross. Now the key to the power in this is to step in with the hook. So we've got that forward momentum for the cross. I covered this in a little bit more detail in my knockout combinations video, so make sure you check that out. But just for now, we're gonna uh, break it down real quick. So we're starting with the feint and I'm already holding the mitts in position for him to step in with that hook cross, okay? So feint. Good, and then a little step out of range a little bit more. We're a little bit bigger step, so you're getting lots of momentum coming forward with that hook. So feint, boom, boom, good. And then nice and deliberate and sharp with the feint. Boom, boom, good, right down the middle. You see right there, Carl Frotch again with another amazing knockout of George Groves, one of the best British fights of all time, or one of the best British knockouts of all time at least. There you have number eight, two more to go. All right guys, number nine, we're gonna start off with a double jab. So a double jab, great for setting up and getting inside. So when we're throwing that double jab, he's gonna come forward, push, kind of push the opponent back, drop the right hand to the body, and then I'm gonna react with a lead hook. Boom, and he's getting out with the footwork, okay? So double jab up top, just to draw the gloves up, so that's gonna make me lift my elbows, right? Creates that opening for the two to the body. If it lands, it's gonna create a reaction of me kind of dropping. If I've managed to take it pretty well, then I can count with the hook, but he's already gone, right? So we're looking to knock out with that body shot and do damage. Double jab, but push me back with a double jab, so we kind of spring off the back foot. So again, we're starting out of range, right? So we're out of range there, so we can't reach. Double jab's gonna get him in. Powerful legs, explode. There, and out, good. And just finishing on defense, always a good habit to create with your boxers and your clients. All right, guys, so the last one before I get to it, this is probably the favorite one, the most realistic. You see Canelo used it right here. Um, reminder, subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna give you a little variation on this one as well. So first off, we're gonna do the most basic version, which is just the one-two and the roll out. So a straight one-two and getting under the punch and stepping out with the roll. But you notice in the Canelo knockout, 
what he's doing is throw, he's using a throwaway jab. So it's like a little flicky jab that's not really designed to do much other than just distract the opponent. And then he loops the right hand around the side. So if you throw that right hand straight all the time, you can, the opponent can get used to seeing that coming straight and start to get comfortable blocking it or slipping it, right? But then what he does with this one, he varies the angle, uses the throwaway jab to create the distraction. Throwaway jab, so just like a flicky jab. And then from there, the, the right hand comes right over the top. Boom, looping uh, right hand shot. And now what we're gonna do is, again, just practice on um, the defense, finishing on safety with the rollout. So a flicky jab, and then loop that right hand over the top, nice and big and wide. Ready? Go. Good, nice. And one more. Good, there you have it. Probably the favorite one. Very dangerous shot, that looping right hand over the top, especially with that distracting jab. So there you have it, 10 knockout combinations. Try them out, leave your comments below. Thanks for watching.